Okay, we are in beautiful Coquitlam, British Columbia. Got the mountains in the background there. Absolutely beautiful. Ran a road race this morning, a uh, 5K road race. I uh, did 23K on the bike after that, and a uh, little sore, a little sore, but uh, feeling good, though. Feeling really good. I just want to do a quick video to show everyone uh, my custom bamboo bike and trailer. That's absolutely badass. I love it so much. It's so wild and unique that, man, I just, I love this thing so much. I don't care that it's, uh, that it weighs too much, but that's cool. All right, so what we got here, custom bamboo frame uh, built basically for the dimensions of my body here. Uh, built that in New York City at a place called the bamboobikestudio.com. So basically what we do is uh, I arrived there on a Saturday morning and uh, basically did all the framework and uh, took it home Sunday evening with me. And uh, I know I, I get asked this a ton, like what's, what are these joints? It's a, it's a mixture of, there's fiberglass at the very bottom of it and uh, not very much fiberglass, but there's the main kind of shaping of it and uh, substance here is carbon fiber and resin. So we take 24K uh, stranded carbon fiber toe is uh, what is called TOW, something that you can just get on eBay, and uh, wrapping it with uh, just a normal, like, uh, two-to-one uh, epoxy. And uh, so that's how we shape the joints there. And uh, I guess we'll just start at the front of the bike here. Handlebars, uh, just a pair of aluminum handlebars that I found for eight bucks. Uh, just simple stem there. Got my bell. Uh, got the light as well. Got the front and rear light on the bike here. Uh, there was one day where I actually needed it, and I didn't have the actual front light at that time, but remember, when you're cycle touring, get lights for your bike. Don't be an idiot like me, and ride in the dark one night, almost getting hit by cars. Don't be an idiot. Front wheel, totally all blacked out. Um, 700C wheel here. Got the nice Continental uh, touring wheels here, uh, touring tires. Uh, there's 728C wheels, and uh, nice, nice and thin, uh, really, really good tread on them. Uh, hopefully lasts me a lot, a lot of kilometers. I uh, got the Shimano uh, uh, V-brakes on the front and rear there. And then we got these, uh, these, uh, these Tech Pro, I think that's the brand, yeah, Tech Pro, uh, basically road levers here. And um, got those on there. I really like the, the the shape of the down of the uh, the down bars, of the road bars there. So I didn't really want to go with a uh, a pair of straight bars. Moving along here, I just picked this up the other day. This is a I forget what's the company name. I think it's Pfizer. Uh, Pfizer uh, hand pump for the wheels. I needed something for the Presta because I used to have Schrader uh, tires before. So uh, I got the Presta ones. This one is a uh, I can actually rest it on the ground as well and uh, and pump it up. And then it's got a little mini gauge on there so I can see about how much I'm putting in there, which is uh, super, super important for uh, cycle touring. Uh, just, well, any 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 uh, kind of bike biking you want to do, you want to make sure that you have enough uh, tire pressure at all times because it makes your ride so much easier. I run these, uh, probably I'll run them at a, right around uh, 90 to 100 PSI. And uh, I think that'll be probably the best. Maybe if I'm in some... Uh, some uh, more bumps and stuff like that. Maybe I'll drop it down to a bit 80 or so. But for now, uh, 100 PSI is the best. Got two Camelback Podium Pros here. Uh, these are probably the best water balls that you can buy, especially for touring. Um, they got the uh, the lock out there, um, so you can completely lock it out if you uh, if you have it in your backpack or something like that, or in your luggage, and you don't want any water coming out. You can just lock it out no water can get through. What's also nice about these is that you can uh, remove the nipple here for easy cleaning. Uh, but these these bottles are they're insulated as well so I mean in the uh, in the hot weather if you have some cool water it'll definitely stay cooler longer. And uh, just got some carbon fiber uh, bottle cage holders there. And uh, these here are um, these are totally custom on the bike. They did not come on here. And what what it is is uh, piece of 3 sixteenths aluminum and it's actually we actually put a bend in the middle of it so that it would fit the contour of the bamboo 
And then what I used is some of this industrial, uh, uh, I don't know, it's, it was this white epoxy kind of crap that will bond anything together. So we bonded that on there. And then what we did was we uh, drilled and tapped a hole for the, for the uh, I forget what size screw it is for the, for the bottle cages. I think it's four or five millimeters. I can't remember off the top of my head. And uh, so we got those on there. Those are completely custom. That You don't really see that on uh, bamboo frames too often. And uh, at the bottom here, just have some uh, cheapo Shimano, uh, basically crank set here. Got the nice uh, Shimano uh, bike cleat pedals. And so you can see I got, you know, the nice uh, mountain bike shoes here with the, with the cleats on the bottom. You really want to go for clip-in pedals, uh, just for any kind of any kind of long biking for sure, just because it really improves your biking efficiency so much. Uh, coming to the rear here, I uh, just got a basic, I don't know, seat. Making sure your seat's nice and level, nice and level, is so important. You can see I really don't have much room on my seat post anymore. I got the GoPro mount there for the camera. I uh, got the seat post hitch there, and then just got the little light there. And uh, coming to the back here. Obviously, you just got the Shimano rear brake there. And also, these mounts here uh, didn't come standard on the frame when I built it. So, what I did was I ended up going to a custom frame builder. And what he did is we took some, uh, I think it was like half-inch pipe or something like that. We cut it in half so that it would kind of fit around the bamboo. And uh, what he did was he welded a uh, basically one of, like one of these uh, brackets here for the, uh, for the brakes onto that and then what I did at home was just wrap it in carbon fiber and resin and those suckers are on there uh, forever basically now because uh, bike still has the original uh, bike caliper mount up there coming to the back here um, if you're ever gonna build a frame and you don't know what you're doing do a lot of research because I really kinda got screwed over on this I really didn't know what I was doing when I was building my, the frame and uh, the Bamboo Bike Studio didn't really kind of explain to me the different types of basically dropouts that you need for certain bikes. So here you see we just have like a standard horizontal dropout, um, which is good for single speeds and all that kind of stuff. But what I really wanted is like a nice cassettes of, uh, of chain rings. And um, so didn't really have that option so because another thing is that the rear spacing uh, for the dropouts is only 120 millimeters on this bike where the standard is uh, 135 millimeters right now so I kind of got screwed over on that so to kind of fix that problem what I did was I went with a uh, a, uh, a Sturmey Archer 8 speed um, internally geared hub here so actually this gives me this hub here gives me eight gears and that is controlled right up on the drop handlebar right here this is a shifter that I got from JTEC. It's, a, it's an aftermarket shifter for the Sturmey Archer 8-speed. This shifter alone was $90. It's not, it was not a cheap shifter since it's such a specialized part. And Because uh, I didn't really want to have like a twist shifter on the end of the handlebars there. It would have looked really stupid. And this is a lot easier to do the shifting. And also got the, uh, obviously the, uh, the fenders on the front and back there. And uh, those were a lot easier once I got the smaller wheels because I used to have 35C wheels and uh, there was just basically no room in there for fenders. So once I went down to the 28, fenders fit in there perfectly. And uh, yeah, so you can see that I have three rings here. Um, I actually, I only use the smallest one and there's actually no way to change it to the bigger gears. Uh, basically this setup right here gives me basically the best of climbing and the best of speed. Typically, I'm only traveling around 26, about, well, not 26, probably about 22 to 24 kilometers an hour when I'm pulling the trailer. So this actually gives me a really good range uh, for climbing. I can climb up most, pretty well, all hills that I've accounted so far on basically the granny gear for this, which is uh, basically a direct drive. So I think this is 25 here, and I don't know exactly... How many are on the front here? I think it's 22 or something like that. I can't remember. But that there gives me a, a pretty good, uh, basically just standard for climbing and a really good range. So I can get up. When I get into my very top gear, I can usually ride around, uh, I'd say probably around 32, 33 kilometers an hour pretty easily. So, 
And um, so that's that's the bike there in a nutshell. Um, this bike has been nothing but headaches from the beginning. If you want to build your own bike, uh, make sure you really know what you're doing before you get into it. Do a lot of research, especially research. Obviously, bike fit is huge, right? So you, you want to make sure that you get the geometry of the bike right. And uh, obviously, you know, if you're going to do something like you want like a standard, you know, uh, cassette deck on the back there with the, uh, the derailleur, make sure you, you know, research the dropouts for that because they're totally different than the horizontal dropouts. And uh, I really hate horizontal dropouts right now. So, but it's what it is. And um, right now it's, uh, it's pretty slick just because it looks like a single speed, but it's eight speeds. All right. So that is the bamboo bike of freaking gloriness and as you can see everything is blacked out on the bike as much as i could painted the lugs here all flat black everything on here i wanted to be black except the water bottles themselves because if you have black water bottles they will attract heat and make whatever is in them hotter so decided to go with white water bottles but that's basically the gist of the bike